So Black Clover Chapter 308 just did one of the biggest twists in the series so far. And arguably one of the biggest twists, if not the biggest twist, of this Spade Invasion arc. You know getting a second grimoire just changed the entire landscape of Black Clover. It's so much to talk about in this chapter, but before we start, like always, guys, be sure to subscribe with notification bells on and leave a like on this video like we usually do. We always go for over 2,000 likes because you guys kill it every single time. Now, let's talk about Black Clover Chapter 308. You know Grinberry all. So this chapter begins with the continuation of Fenro and Langris versus Xenon. And we see a full display of Fenron using his instant teleportation spatial magic and I really like to see this because Fenron was one of those characters I always wonder what kind of power up he will have in this spade arc because this fits his character I'm glad it wasn't some offensive spatial magic spell like Langris because that really doesn't suit him at all. Now while using Langris for his mana zone being inside of it they want to get close to Xenon they want to disrupt Xenon's mana zone and Fenron believes that once they get close it's over which we already know there's no way that these two, even before we even finish the chapter, we know that Fenro and Langris will not be enough for this Xena. Xena is just on a different level. Now, Fenro did something very interesting here because we saw that Xena started to know the timing of the instant teleportation. However, Fenro used his mana method, which increases the speed of the instant teleportation. Now, we know that using mana zone it increases your mana sensing and reaction, and we know that Xena's mana zone is activated. So, for his mana zone not to be able to react fast enough, it shows you that with the added effects of mana method, this speed is beyond instant at this point. If Xena, Devil Xena, couldn't react to this with activation of mana zone, then I think it's safe to say that no one in the entire series will be able to react to something like this this fast. And now that they are close to Xenon, this gave Langris the opportunity to use his spatial magic, which will completely erase Xenon, which we saw that he target the heart. But I believe we all knew at this point Xenon wasn't done, no matter if they target the heart, because in Black Clover, Devil's got like five health bars. I mean, we've seen this from Zagard and Megikula, you have to completely erase the entire heart. But you would think that with Langris spatial magic that can erase things, but it did not work out well in their favor, which I will explain later in the video. Now on the next panel, we do see Yuno, know, he's waking up, he's wondering how long he was knocked out for. And we see that he's surrounded in this room that's full of grimoires. And we really get to see the distance between Yuno know, and the fight that is happening with Langris, Fenro, and Xena. And he sent this guy flying. I didn't realize how far back Yuno know, went, but man, Xena knocked this guy out of dodge. <laughs> but by the time that Yuno regained his consciousness, the fight was over. Langris is knocked through the ground and you see that Fenro is being hung up by Xena's bone magic. Now, I don't believe that Langris and Fenro, they are dead at this point of the story. I think they are still alive. They're still kicking. Well, their heart is. You get the drift. <laughs> But their defeat was off screen and this is one of those off screen fights that I really don't mind because no one saw Langris or Fenro doing anything to Xenon. This was not a fair fight whatsoever so this outcome was expected. Now Xenon explained that even spatial magic that can erase everything cannot destroy the devil's heart because his heart is still intact even after Langris that erases everything with his spatial magic he could not erase Xenon's heart. Now we know that spatial magic is classified as irregular magic, but not all irregular magic is arcane. So this means that Langris magic is not arcane. If he could not destroy the devil's heart or his magic is simply just not strong enough. Either way for Xenon's heart to still be intact after a spatial magic spell like that says a lot about his strength and his power and durability as a devil and destroying this heart would not be an easy task. Because at this point, Xenon is already claiming victory. He's saying that he won. Now we see, you know, he's having a very sad moment because he's wondering what can he do? Because he noticed that he sees Fenrir. He's from the Black Bull squad. He noticed that that is Asta's friend. He sees that Langris is down and he's like, what could I do when I stand up? Did I actually make the right choice? And this choice that he's talking about is the situation where he aimed the spirit of Eurus bow and arrow at Xenon's chest, but he missed his heart because if he would have aimed at his heart, that would have killed Langris and Xenon in the process. But you know, was looking out for his comrade. But seeing the display of how overwhelming Xenon's power is, it's making him second guess a lot of things. Because if he would have followed through, aiming at the heart, killing Langris and Xenon in the process, you know, wouldn't be able to live with himself. But at this point, you know, starts to remember things and how his comrades were all killed when Xenon attacked and his dark disciples. Because in this situation, you know, was hopeless. And now he's back in the same position once again, which is triggering this memory. 
He also thinks about everything that he went through during the captain's meeting, how he spoke out, and how hard it was for him just to be picked in this fight. Because everyone there was against him going, but Nox saw Yuno's resolve. His captain being taken away and him fighting Xenon personally himself already was enough resolve at that time. But when Yuno revealed that he is actually a royal from the spade, a prince, there's no way that Nox could turn that down. Then he starts to think about the hard work and the training that he went through with Langris just to get here just to be in the spot to lose to Xenon once again. And this starts to get really sad because Yuno starts to cry. He's like, is this how it ends? And when I start to see Yuno cry, I started to think about when Sister Lily talked about that Yuno hasn't cried since the day he was a kid, when the day Asta saved him when the guy tried to steal the magic stone. We didn't see Yuno cry ever since that day. He didn't cry during the Go to Dawn slaughter because he was angry, he was more so pissed off but we did not see him shed any tears. This is how you know that you know in this moment when he was crying, he felt like everything is over. There's nothing he can do. He has no choice but to accept his death. As Yuno is looking at the graves of the Golden Dawn members who passed away, he starts to talk about how they called him a genius. He was the hope of the village. He was chosen, recognized, envy, and entrusted, and lost. But he made a vow, a vow that he made together with Asta. And we know that vow very well, and that vow is to become Wizard King. And this part of the dialogue was my favorite part of the chapter because you know is so determined. He refusing to lose. He know that he has nothing. There's nothing he can do to Xenon, yet he's still resisting to accept defeat. And he stops crying immediately. And I love this. This is the you know we need. This is it. Then a spirit appears in front of you know and agrees with everything that he said. And he talks about that. I am you, but you also have your own power. Now, this is 100% the elf spirit that's inside of Yuno because the way this chapter ended, it all makes sense, which I will make a separate video about this entire topic. This makes sense why this is Lick's son and why the Spade army that showed up with Ralph, well, the Resistant army, they were so shocked that Yuno had wind magic. And I remember when that happened in the chapter 279, a lot of us were speculating, what does this mean? Why was this guy so surprised that Yuno had wind magic? Because now we then see Yuno receive a Spade Kingdom Grimoire, and we know that the Grimoire is connected to one soul. So that means that when the elf spirit inside of Yuno said, I am you, but you also have your own power, this indicates that the Clover Kingdom Grimoire, the Wind Four Leaf Clover, was technically sent to Lake Sun that's inside of Yuno. However, these two are one of the same, they share the same body. This is why Lake told Yuno know, that thank you for allowing me to fight with my son. And when this light appeared in the sky above Yuno, know, we see everyone reacting to it. We see the Spade Resistance Army and we also see Patri, which it's been so long since we saw Patri. But he confirms this as well. He's like, of course, Yuno know, got wind magic from Licks and Tetias. He didn't finish the sentence, but we know what he's going to say, meaning he got wind magic from their son. So for the entirety of Black Clover, you know has not been using his original magic. You know is already so strong. He's already broken already, but it makes sense why the wind spirit chose him. We see in the last panel, you know talks about that he will save everyone. He will save the captain. I will be this country's salvation and I will be the wizard king. That's why I will defeat you. And we see, you know, he's full of charged up mana all around him. He's holding the spirit and he also has his second grimoire, the spade grimoire. And that's how the chapter ends. And this was so amazing because I have so many thoughts. I have so many thoughts and things I want to say about this, but I will save it for a separate video because, man, this is a huge topic to dive into. A huge topic. I have so many ideas what Yuno's original magic will be for the next chapter we see, but I have a better idea for you is that if you subscribe to the channel when notification goes on, you will see that idea in video form next time you come across the channel, right? <laughs> you guys have an awesome life. Take care of yourselves. Stay blessed, and I'm out.